Welcome to another episode of Crypto and Things. I am your host, Scott Cunningham, and today we're going to be talking about Ethereum gas fees, how much I've spent, how you can avoid spending a ridiculous amount like I have spent. We will talk about that momentarily. And uh, and then why I spent so much and, you know, the reasons behind it, because there was good reasons for it. Um, I wasn't just, you know, losing money or just throwing money away. There's good reasons for it. I'll talk about that a little bit and uh, and then discuss Ethereum 2.0, as well as I would love to hear what are your suggestions for Ethereum alternatives or ETH killers for me to look into. Uh, and I will be doing that in an episode very, very soon as well. But uh, yeah, let's jump right in. The first thing we're going to look at is my uh, my MetaMask's Etherscan account because you can go in and then click analytics. And then if you navigate over to transaction fees, as I've already done here, you can see um, adjusted. So like what I actually spent at the time of spending it, I've really only spent two thousand dollars and hundred twenty eight two thousand hundred twenty eight dollars. And uh, in terms of being a receiver and losing money on the fees that they've spent, $364. But when you adjust that for what it's actually valued today and the actual amount of Ethereum that I could have, well, I could have had $11,000 worth of Ethereum, uh, which is 2.09 and 0.38. That is worth over $11,000 US today. And... um, The reason that that's so significant, I mean, obviously, aside from the fact that it's a lot of money uh, and a lot of people I know don't even have $11,000 invested in cryptocurrency, let alone have spent that on fees. And a lot of this comes back to, you know, using swap exchanges, uh, Uniswap, for example, mostly, and withdrawing crypto from social platforms. So one is much easier to uh, get around than the other. So let's discuss it. For Uniswap and and swap exchanges similar to Uniswap that use smart contracts, you have to spend Ethereum gas fees, not only to just do the transaction, but typically there's going to be like multiple calls being made. So it might be ETH to USDT to BAT and then, you know, all these different calls. And then you end up spending a ridiculous amount on fees. So a good example here. Say I wanted to spend all of my ETH on some BAT. The transaction itself is a $400 transaction, but how much is the gas fee? Wow. For a $400 transaction, the gas fee is estimated to be $270. Meaning I can't make this transaction because I would need uh, $800 worth of Ethereum to do it. That's insane. But this is the reality that we're living with right now. So a lot of people are not using Ethereum because of this. However, I will say that I I still strongly believe that Ethereum 2.0, when that is fully launched in Q1 of 2022, so in the next three to six months or so, I'm very, very confident that that is going to solve a lot of these issues. So I'm not super, you know, gung ho on all these Ethereum killers, quote unquote, uh, you know, taking over, so to speak. I think a lot of this will kind of blow over, but you guys still need um, alternatives to avoid all these gas fees, or at least what's the best, most efficient way for you to trade and spend the least amount of fees. That's the only thing that you guys care about because, you know, you obviously don't want to spend $11,000 in fees as well. So the way to get around this is to not use swap exchanges, but presuming the reason you're using a swap exchange is for anonymity or privacy, you can use non-smart contract swap exchanges or non-KYC exchanges. A couple examples, Uh, CoinEx or Bybit are great exchanges. Oh my God are great exchanges that um, that don't have any KYC and little to no identifiable information whatsoever. I highly recommend using these, but you might be limited as to you know, what coins you're trading and what's available. But this and Bybit are two great examples of platforms that, uh, that you can go and use and, and trade on. 
Those are two examples of just normal exchanges that are non-KYC. I wouldn't recommend using any KYC exchanges. If you were just using KYC exchanges, like then you probably don't even need to use Uniswap or you weren't using Uniswap anyways. So this is more so for the people who want that extra security. And also you shouldn't be leaving your crypto on exchanges either. You should have it in your own wallet. So, you know, you shouldn't just leave it here. You definitely should be withdrawing and depositing as you go. But what this could do is if you are trading any ERC-20 tokens, you can avoid the you know $270 gas fees and you just pay the one gas fee to send it to this address, right? So that is a much, much cheaper gas fee. Uh, it'll probably be around $50 or so right now, I believe. And that's you know less than five times the amount. So definitely a significant improvement. Or if you don't wanna use this, because of whatever reason, you still want to use swap exchanges and not actually, you know, register for an exchange. Uh, there's many non smart contract swap exchanges, meaning that you're not actually as secure because you're not trading it through a smart contract, but these exchanges still work very, very well. And uh, I've never had any issues using them. Some are a little more uh, restrictive than others. For example, Block Trades does require that you at least sign up and have an account, but you know you don't really have to give up any identifiable information by doing so. Um, another example is like Simple Swap. There's a lot of different exchanges out there that, uh, or Changely, for example, that are non-smart contract exchanges. So again, they are less secure and less safe to use because you know if there's an issue, it's it's like human error more than likely. Uh, rather than it being something wrong with the smart contract, which rarely happens. So that is how you'll do that. But again, it is less secure. So you do have to keep that in mind. But if you want to get around all of those fees, this is these are the two best ways that you could possibly do that. And that's kind of what I've been doing. I've been using uh, CoinX and Bybit lately. I haven't been doing a lot of uh, using these exchanges. Typically what I end up using block trades for is converting to and from Hive. That's just generally what I've used it for. Uh, I didn't want to pay any extra fees potentially for receiving the Ethereum afterwards, like if you're trading from an ETH token to another ETH token. Uh, another way to get around that is if you are on an exchange, you don't wanna be trading Ethereum-based token to an Ethereum-based token. You would wanna trade something in Ethereum and then get something else out that is much more effective to use like Dash or Litecoin or Bitcoin Cash if what you're trying to mainly avoid is the fees. Because again, for most people, they cannot afford to uh, be spending 50, 100, 270 on one single transaction. And again, $11,000 for most people, I would say they don't even have that much in crypto to begin with, let alone to spend on fees. The last two things I wanted to show you guys were examples of why it's so expensive uh, and why I spent so much money. A lot of it was withdrawing ERC-20 based tokens from social platforms that I earned it on. So, you know, a lot of this wasn't at a loss. Um, I had to pay these fees at some point to get my crypto out. And, um, you know, I just tried to time it as best as possible. Hopefully, you can just wait until Ethereum 2.0 launches in uh, Q1 of 2022. And then you can start actually withdrawing everything and avoiding a lot of the uh, issues and, and the fees that you had to pay previously, hopefully. For example, on Yup, um, if I if I wanted to withdraw my 251 Yup, well, the bridge fee is 610. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, Yup is like a dollar or something right now. So you're literally spending 600 plus dollars to get your Ethereum because the ETH to EOS bridge is the most inefficient way possible to uh, to, to transfer around your YUP uh, as an ERC-20 token. Uh, it, it's probably one of the most expensive and actually it's so expensive that it's disabled right now. Um, so that's not a good look, but this is the reality of trying to withdraw uh, ERC-20 based tokens and spending exorbitant fees Another example is like Den.Social. If I were to try to withdraw my MTR here, we'll just do one as an example. This is $157. So 
cheaper than a Uniswap uh, trade, but still grossly expensive. And again, um, that's probably close to a large portion of the value of the MTR. So you want to avoid uh, losing the majority of your profits just to get those profits. So again, I'm thinking the best thing right now is to wait uh, for a few months and hopefully a lot of these issues will be alleviated. There are many ways around these things too. I previously talked about um, certain exchanges having requirements like minimum withdrawals on Publish OX. That's fine because you're not going to lose anything. You just have to meet a threshold first. Same with like Rockfin. Uh, you need 100 Ray earned before you can withdraw it. Here on DTube, I previously thought that the only way to get your money out was through uh, connecting MetaMask and then right here and then withdrawing it and selling it and trading it on Uniswap. But instead, you can actually send your DTC to the Ionomy uh, account and then have them uh, show like you just enter your account and you type in your information in the memo and then it'll show up on Ionomy and you can trade directly that way. And that will allow you to avoid all of the ERC-20 based fees that you would otherwise pay. So then you can get in and out. And the only fees you're going to spend are the withdrawal fees from the Ionomy exchange. And I think that is a much better way to get around it. There's a lot of, there, there's multiple exchanges and multiple platforms that have multiple ways of doing things, like I said with this. Um, but a lot of the strictly ERC-20 based tokens, um, like with Yup, Den.Social, Mines, most of those are going to charge you a gas fee. Only certain platforms will cover it for you, like Publish OX, um, but that is pretty rare to see. This video is not a long one. I really just wanted to highlight that I've spent an insane amount. There's definitely ways to get around it and that it wasn't really all for nothing. Like it wasn't just at a loss. It was the only way to get these tokens out. So it made sense to do, but it's definitely not ideal or feasible for the average person because you have to earn a really large amount of tokens before it's even really viable for you to withdraw them uh, to actually get profit as well as being able to afford the fees themselves. Because obviously you don't want to spend more on the fees than the actual uh, crypto that you're getting because then you're obviously at a, a complete loss. So that is everything. I hope that all makes sense. Let me know if you have other ways of getting around paying eat gas fees. I know Uniswap is working on some stuff to make improvements. We have ETH 2.0 coming up very soon. So I'm very uh, excited for that. I have high hopes, high anticipation for the ETH 2.0 upgrade. And I think it will alleviate a lot of these issues with scaling the blockchain via sharding. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to see how that will play out. Let me know how much have you spent on Ethereum gas fees? And also consider that this is just for my MetaMask not considering anything else that I've done with Ethereum. So it's probably actually more than 11,000, sadly, but that is just what I have access to. Uh, again, it was worth spending it, but it's definitely not ideal because there was no other way for me to get those, those tokens and get those funds out. But the big mistake that I made was then trading those on Uniswap and paying another set of very high gas fees when I could have just been looking for the best exchanges and trading them there and saving a lot of money in the process. Again, you've also got to remember and consider uh, Ethereum is consistently going up in value. So, you know, if you spend something now, it might be worth a lot more money in the future. And, uh, and then you're losing out on all that appreciation as well. When I originally had spent the money, it's only, you know, 2,500 or something like that. But at today's current value, it's over $11,000. And I could have had that money if I had, um, you know, better, you know, optimized when I was spending fees um, or, you know, waiting longer to withdraw from social platforms as well. So you got to consider all these things. Uh, hopefully a lot of this will be solved, but otherwise you got to make sure to time everything as best as possible and spend and trade in the places that it's cheapest to do so. I'm still using swap exchanges and non-KYC exchanges, but if you don't mind privacy or KYC, then you know you can just trade anywhere on any exchange and there's not really any issues. So 
Let me know what are you guys doing? How much have you spent on fees? What are your thoughts on all of this? And uh, yeah, what do you what do you think about the fact that I spent over eleven thousand dollars on fees? Is that is that more than you even have in crypto? Is that insane to you guys? Um, what? alternatives should I be looking into instead? Some of the things that I have listed so far from uh, the Twitter thread that I created and everyone's been commenting on, I have quite a bit here. Uh, Soul, BSC, ADA, Matic, Dot, Adam, Neo, Avex, uh, XTZ, Terra, Hive, Smart, BCH, um, and then uh, Tron and EOS as well. So quite a handful, I'll be diving into all those. If there's something that you think I should also look into or that I'm missing, let me know and I will add it to the list when I go and, you know, look through all the ETH killers, quote unquote. I'm Scott Cunningham, aka Sconcy Business, signing off. Cheers.